Amid the recent wave of violence in the Middle East, which left more than 200 Palestinians and a dozen Israelis dead, Palestinian youth began to ramp up their activism. A foreign policy article called Gen Z Reclaims the Palestinian Cause is examining this phenomenon. The piece explores how young people, fed up with the political system, are responding. Dalia Hatuka wrote that article, and she's here to talk more about activism among Palestinian youth. Thank you so much for joining us. I think a lot of people may have seen, you know, coverage of um, unrest in the area and seen young people out throwing stones or rocks. But talk to me about how things were different with this most recent round of unrest. How did youth participate? Um, thank you for having me on. Um, basically, I think it's worth um, explaining uh, a couple of things here. Uh, the Palestinian Authority, which uh, runs the West Bank, doesn't have any jurisdic uh, jurisdiction in East Jerusalem. And so the protests in uh, Jerusalem, mainly in the neighborhood of Sheikh Sharrah and the Old City, have largely been uh, grassroots-based, uh, social media-enhanced popular movements uh, without the formal political leadership that usually governs such a showing in the West Bank uh, or Gaza. Um, throughout this crisis, the Palestinian Authority was also absent from the scene. Uh, it did a little bit beyond issuing statements of condemnation of the Israeli bombing campaign and the staggering death toll it caused. But on the ground, uh, civic leaders, especially Palestinian youth, have kind of taken over the vacuum uh, left by the leadership. So a few weeks ago, uh, we saw that uh, together with Palestinian civil society groups, there was a general stri strike uh, throughout the occupied West Bank in Israel. Uh, the strike was significant in that it was strictly adhered to on both sides of the Green Line, um, essentially erasing, albeit uh, temporarily, the pervasive geographical and political divide between Palestinians who are citizens of Israel and those who are not. So this movement has been led by non-politicized people, non-party aligned uh, young people. It's a different generation that's basically the result of two intifadas and a failed pe peace process. And they see in themselves mm -hmm. the ultimate power to challenge Israel. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as the Oslo generation, uh, Palestinians born after the peace accords named after the Norwegian capital uh, were signed in the early 1990s. Um, these are young people who've lived 20 or so years in what Israel tries to promote as an integrated Jerusalem. And it also seems like another factor, and you write about this, and you sort of mentioned this a little bit, has been the Palestinian Authority. And yes, the Palestinian Authority was strangely quiet during this last um, bout of unrest. But uh, the Authority President, Mahmoud Abbas, his decision to postpone parliamentary and presidential elections really also was a factor. Can you explain to our viewers what happened and what impact it had on Palestinian youth? So basically, these elections, um, they're 15, about 15 years um, late. Um, uh, the Palestinian Authority had initially um, uh, called for elections several times, and then every time they've been canceled for one reason or another. This time around, people thought that things would be different. Uh, there was a lot of momentum. 95% of uh, Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza um, actually registered uh, for um, the elections. So um, everybody, including myself, thought it would be uh, different this time around. Um, then when it seemed that the um, Fatah party, which uh, basically governs the West Bank, uh, the, the PA is run by the Fatah party. And it seemed that the Fatah party would be split into several, um, uh, several groups. Uh, I think that's what uh, scared Mahmoud Abbas and um, led him to cancel the elections. This caused a lot of frustration uh, among uh, young Palestinians. Um, a lot of them have not seen anybody uh, rule uh, the West Bank except Mahmoud Abbas. He's 86 years old. He's not in good health. And, um, you know, they say that he does not represent them. He doesn't represent um, their thoughts and aspirations um, about how to move forward. Uh, they've seen the peace process um, uh, come and go many, many years um, without any kind of... Um, 
um, substantial, um, uh, anything substantial on the ground, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you talked about uh, East Jerusalem and, and in, in the article how kind of the, uh, the shift to East Jeru Jerusalem as the area where a lot of the energy is coming from. Um, and when I hear about and also groups that don't have a particular leader, but they're, they're certainly single-minded in their focus. You can't help but to think about the impact of social media, its ability to organize different groups, small factions. We've seen it all over the world. Can you talk about the impact of social media on this shift towards you know, the Gen Z activism? Absolutely. So um, without a political manifesto to which they must adhere, uh, young, young Palestinians have kind of taken to social media to raise awareness about uh, the Israeli attacks and the looming eviction of their fellow Palestinians in East Jerusalem in Sheikh Jarrah, uh, uh, to be exact. Uh, so, uh, you know, they've been denied formal participation in Palestinian elections. They're uh, being oppressed at the hands of Israeli and sometimes Palestinian security forces. And so these young Palestinians, they've been campaigning on the ground. They've been setting up support groups. Uh, they've been attending Israeli court hearings. Uh, they're making their voices heard through protests and by speaking to the media. And their communal sol solidarity, which had no prior coordination, managed to hurl um, the Palestinian cause back into the political mainstream. So um, while legacy media organizations have traditionally deferred to accounts presented by the Israeli government, Palestinian youth on, on TikTok, Instagram, and other apps are now um, sort of offering an alternate uh, narrative, reporting on, sharing, disseminating, uh, live cell, uh, cell phone footage of events, pictures, memes. Um, this kind of technology has given uh, their voices a way to find solidarity throughout the diaspora, uh, both online and in the streets, uh, where social media has played a prominent role in marshalling protesters in Israel, um, in the occupied Palestinian territories and uh, around the world, basically. It's truly fascinating. Uh, Dahlia Hatuka, thank you so much for joining us this morning.